All right, I'm the Fly Raid Master, and today we're talking about why every shop needs some sort of scope. So random thought of the day was, how many scopes are in this shop? The upstairs shop and the lower shop. I personally own a Snap-on scope, a Pico scope, a launch scope, as well as an old Vantage Pro, which is not a scope, but close enough. It's a graphing multimeter, but it's still qualifies in my book as a good beginner scope. They're not cheap and available anymore. <laughs> They're kind of gotten expensive, so don't go looking for one of those, but there's plenty of options out there. Now, Billy has a scope from AES Wave. Paul has a snap-on scope on his Triton. And Bam Bam downstairs has the launch scope as well as a snap-on scope. See a theme? There's lots of scopes in this shop because a professional shop really does need to have a scope. There's just some things that cannot be done efficiently with teardown. There are sometimes it's a lot better just to scope a circuit. Now this vehicle right here, it's not really important because it's really more about why you need a scope. Now I'm gonna be 100% honest, this is not a case study. This is not a actual, well it's a broken vehicle, but not for what we're talking about because I created the problem. The problem I created was a cam sensor fault code. I unplugged it. Now let's say we're using the, the launch tool, which is a very capable scope. You go to X431 fix, you look up service information on that code and it has you go through a long list of stuff to check. And then at the end of it, it tells you, oh, swap sensors. This is a 3.6, by the way, Dodge Durango, 2019. The cam sensor is under the intake. You're probably not getting that out very easily to swap it with the other side, but you can test it with a scope, which is what we're talking about. So you take out your scope, you back probe, let's say you have that circuit code. Paul had one actually the other day and he scoped it, saw the sensor dropping out, was able to confirm that quick and easy with a scope, whereas swapping sensors, because his was actually the same one I'm recreating, is the one on the driver's side, which is easy to access. But swapping it for the other one is not easy. This is the EGR intake. So it's gonna be a little more involved than the other Chrysler taking it off. Though I think you can get that one out, but this one you can't, this is 2019. And the reason I'm not doing this live is the reason it's here is ticky, ticky, ticky. It's quite loud and it's too loud for my mic, so. It either would be, it'd screw up my audio or I, I just, I can't run it because <laughs> it's just loud. It's ticking pretty bad on pastor side. So, and that's why as a diagnostic technician in any shop, you really should have some sort of scope and know how to use it. Now you can go as basic as what Billy has, a U-scope. They're relatively affordable. You can add a lot of accessories for it, you know. Low amp probes, you know, for me, I've got high amp probe as well. Do relative compression. One of the best ways to confirm compression on a vehicle without taking all the spark plugs out, again, intake has to come off, it's not easy. Doing a relative compression test is a really quick and easy way to determine the health of an engine. Now let's, let's talk about the, K, the cam sensor situation that you may run into. Out in the parking lot, I have a, a cord that driving down the road, stalled out, and the only codes stored are cam and crank codes, circuit codes. And that engine, you're not replacing the cam and crank sensors and the car running. One of the common hits on Identifix is a bad starter causing the crank sensor fault code. Well, if you crank it, <laughs> it's out of time. <laughs> and there's lots of resources on, you know, Facebook, 
There's lots of references out there to find known goods. One of the best things you can do as a scope user is do cam and crank correlation tests on known good cars because that way when you go to compare them, guess what? You're on the same software, the same settings, and you can easily compare them back to back. Whereas if you've tried to compare, you know, somebody with a snap-on capture versus your Pico or versus a launch tool, it's a lot easier when everything is the same. And you know, Pico, you can do overlays. But just a note, the laptop was used to capture stuff. That's the only reason it's there. <laughs> But a scope is just such a great tool to have around. Deep dives into pressure transducers, you can you know, pull out pulse sensors. There's so much stuff you can do with a scope. And it doesn't have to be a high dollar Pico. You can get started with something that attaches to your scan tool, like the launch tool. Don't buy Snap-on, they're overpriced, especially when you get into their scope stuff. It's just way overpriced. You're much better off going somewhere else. Just a note. Shop has a Zeus or whatever. The Snap-on is also a very capable tool. So is the launch tool. <laughs> and you know, a lot less money. But being able to understand simple wiring diagrams. You know, Scanner Danner does a great job of giving you the, the background to be able to figure out circuit design so you can use a scope. You know, I can't say how many times his teachings have helped everybody in this shop. Uh, you know, Billy credits him for getting him to go to Vision, coming to the aftermarket because he wanted to expand his skills. Being a diagnostic guy, you really need to invest in a scope, you know? It doesn't have to be a high dollar scope. You know, Picos are, are nice and, you know, but get started with using a scope. It's just such a valuable tool. There's a reason there's so many in this shop. You know, for the guys up here that don't know how to use a scope, I'm more than happy to show them. The shop also has an Autel scope as well. Everybody in the shop has access to a scope for a very good reason. We, we want the precision of using a scope to diagnose cars. Testing ignition coils. Ignition just makes so much more sense than swapping coils to a point. Sorry, Mario. <laughs> Some of the problems come from, you know, our mental background. You know, we're, we're mechanics. So we wanna go ahead and tear into it and start looking for stuff. Well, that may not be the best option. I get that hour diagnostic and in 15 minutes, I can have a waveform on that sensor and know that my sensor is dropping out and quickly confirm what it needs versus spending an hour and a half taking that intake off to get the other sensor or ordering a sensor and hoping it fixes it just way better just to hook up a scope and know for sure. Because that's what we all want. We want to fix the car right the first time. A scope can so help you do that. So as always, thanks for watching. I am the Flat Rate Master.